In this video, I'll review how to perform security analysis using Bloomberg. I'll show you how to perform several of the most basic functions in Bloomberg for macroeconomic analysis, and then I'll show you how to perform basic industry analysis with the Bloomberg Intelligence and Market Map functions. And then finally, I'll review some very basic functions for performing fundamental analysis. So let's get started. The first function I want to show you is the World Economic Indicators function, or ECOW. So to get the World Economic Indicators function, I will just go up to the function bar and type ECOW, and here it is. So this ECOW function will allow us to review just about any economic statistics we want. And some of these numbers are going to be quarterly numbers, which is why you see some blanks here, except for the, the last month in the quarter. So we have real GDP quarter over quarter, so per percentage growth. We have real GDP year over year. If we want to get some other metrics, we can scroll down here. As you can see, there's a lot of other metrics that we have access to. Now, if we want to simplify this, we can just go up to the indicator function and go to this drop down, and we can sort our statistics by whatever we're looking for. If we're looking for consumer prices, we can get the CPI excluding food and energy here, so basic inflation rate. And then if we want more information, we can actually get a chart of any of these by clicking this blue button here. And this will allow us to view a uh, graph of whatever indicator we're interested in. If we want, we can also dial into any of these individual statistics. So let's say quarter over quarter, over quarter growth in GDP. Uh, we can get a sense of what's being measured here, and we can see the details of the release, and we can also see any related statistics associated with whatever statistic we're talking about, and then finally we can get some related news, or news that's related to our particular statistic. The next economic indicator I want to show you is the economic calendars indicator, ECO. And this will allow us to see what economic statistics are going to be reported and what the forecasted value of those statistics is. So we'll go up to our function bar and type ECO. And now we can see what statistics are going to have a news release or be reported by whatever organization is reporting them. So the LEI is going to be reported on August 20th, and we have a couple of other pieces of information like new home sales. Uh, this R indicates relevance, so the, the larger this is, the more important the statistic is. It's a nice metric. And then over here on the right-hand side, we have an indication of what this is going to cover, uh, what the surveys say the, the median number is going to be, and then we have the actual number. So these statistics up through 24, these have already been reported by whatever organization reports them. So as you can see, there are a lot of statistics that have beat the median outlook. And we can also sort our statistics based on several metrics. So government statistics, or let's say economic events, or we could just go back to economic releases. And we can sort by the type of economic release and also the date. We can also export this to Excel, and we can also uh, adjust this in many other ways. We can create alerts for ourselves as well. Along with this ECO function, there's another function that you should know about. It's ECST, and that's the World Economic Statistics function. And this will give you the statistics of countries outside the US and a lot of their economic statistics. Uh, so I'm on that function right now, and here's all of our data for the US. And if we want to, we can change that to, well, a large or any country that you see on this list. So let's say Asia Pacific will go with 
oh, how about Japan? And we can see their consumer prices, so their, their inflation metrics, leading indicators. We can see their GDP metrics, real GDP by expenditure. We can increase the range if we want to. We can look at other sources for these metrics. Uh, we can also change this to year-over-year -year changes. We can do a huge number of things with this economic statistics, or ECST function. Now the next function I want to show you relates to industry analysis, and it's the BI function, the Bloomberg Intelligence function. And this is one of the most valuable tools we have for industry analysis. So I'll go up to the function bar and type BI. And here we are. So the Bloomberg intelligence function essentially gives you any information you could possibly want on a specific industry. So let's say we want, so here's our 11 sectors, the ones that you should be familiar with, the GICS sectors. So let's say we want utilities. We can s drill down into, let's say, electric utilities, and we'll get some information on, well, the electric utilities sector. So we'll have research on that sector. We'll have additional research down here. We'll also have a lot of other information like the valuation ratios of some of the competitors in this sector. So this is just the median PE ratio of, of securities in this sector. And then we also have some relevant industry indicators. Now, if we want to really drill down and get a lot more data on this particular industry, we can do a couple of things. We can actually look at the industry button over here, and this will give us a breakdown in news concerning the industry itself. We can also look at government operations or the how the government is playing a role in this industry. We can also look at litigation in this industry. And if we go down here, we can actually look at the market share in this industry. So for example, Southern Company is one of the biggest utility firms in the United States. And we can see that the market share uh, in terms of total sales, so right now, Southern Company represents about 17.5% of the electric utility industry or the electric utilities industries. We can see the actual value and we can see the other players in this industry. So Duke Energy, American Electric Power, etc. Now we can go down here to the bottom of this data library drop down and we can also look up plant operation, energy prices, Basically, for every industry, there's going to be some industry-specific information down here on the bottom left. So en en energy prices, here's the prices of energy at various times. And down here at the very bottom, we can get some information on events in the electric utilities industry. So here's all the upcoming events that might interest us. Now the final thing I'll say about the Bloomberg intelligence function is that if you wanted to, you could absolutely look up information on an individual security like Ford equity or Tesla equity. However, I'll leave that to you. The next function I want to show you is the market map. And the market map allows you to compare various industries with each other. It'll allow you to see industry valuations as a whole. And to get the market map, you just type in MMAP, and it usually takes a few seconds to load. But when it does load, we get something like this. This is a great way to analyze each sector and look at various ratios across those sectors. So right now we're looking at the valuation ratios, so the PE ratio. In this case, this is going to be the, the average PE ratio for each of these sectors. So as you can see, the healthcare sector has the highest PE ratio. Those securities are most highly valued, while the financial sector has very low PE ratios and very low other valuation ratios with the exception of the EBITDA ratio. Now, if we wanted to, we can also look at other metrics like 
credit ratios. And here we go. So here we can see the credit ratios that Bloomberg has compiled for each of the sectors. So here, the financial sector is one of the sectors that is least solvent. So it's got the, on average, the highest debt to EBITDA ratio. We have the highest EBITDA to interest expense ratios. And if we wanted to, we could even look at the default risk indicators. So for example, this, this first indicator is the average CDS spread or credit default swap spread on the debt of firms in these sectors. So as you can see, the oil and gas sector, the spread between the CDSs and the risk-free rate or uh, a treasury security with the same maturity is highest for debt of firms in this sector, which, uh, so it, just to refresh your memory, credit default swaps are essentially insurance for debt. If the debt issuance is defaulted upon, whoever owns this CDS is entitled to have the, the, the full value of the debt uh, paid to them who, uh, by whoever issued this CDS. So it's essentially insurance on debt. So the higher the spread, the riskier the debt. So that's essentially what we see here. Firms in the oil and gas sector and firms in the basic materials sectors are the most in, in, at risk of default. Again, we have some other CDS measures, and then we have a one-year default probability, which is calculated by Bloomberg itself. And so the average one-year default probability is highest for the oil and gas sector, which is not a surprise. I mean, they're they're facing a an existential an existential crisis right now with the uh, development of renewable energy and the low price of oil. Next, let's jump down and talk about fundamental analysis. So the first function I'll show you is the relative value function, RV. So I'll go up here and type RV. And here we have the relative valuation function. And what the relative valuation function does is it takes several securities and it identifies the relative valuation of all those securities. And the way it does this is by allowing you to input some grouping. So for example, right now the Russell 2000 index is loaded here, but let's say we chose the S&P 500 index. Here, we can compare the relative valuation of every security on the S&P 500 index. And we have their valuation metrics that you're probably already familiar with, the price to book ratio, price to sales, price to cash flow, price to EBITDA, PE ratio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you wanna compare companies with other companies in a, an index, this is how you do it. The next function I'll show you is the BRC function. And this is useful if you want to get research reports from analysts. And so pretty straightforward. All I do is go up to the function bar and type BRC. So here we have the brokerage reports tab. And as you can see, I've already loaded Tesla and you can see some of the brokerage recommendations or the, the analyst recommendations over here on the right-hand side. And each of these corresponds with a new report with respect to the company that we've loaded. So if you want a different company, you just type it in up here. You can also search by analyst or the, the actual firm that is putting out the report. But why don't we go ahead and just select one. How about JP Morgan? So this JP Morgan report was put out on July 28th, and we have some basic information about Tesla, and we have a price target here. Tesla's price target on 1220 was, or for 1220 is 325. The price 
on July 22nd of 2020 is 1,592. Uh, so the rest of this report will provide us a large amount of information about the stock itself. And th this broker actually recommends an underweighting rating. Uh, they apparently believe that Tesla is a little overvalued. That would make sense since their, their price target is significantly lower than the current price per share. Now, you can look up reports on just about any company. Some of these reports are going to be different. So for example, this Deutsche Bank report contains an actual recommendation, a hold right up top, and then we'll also see the price target. Theirs is a little higher, and they provided this report as of July 22nd, and uh, we also have some information about th the company as well. So we'll have a breakdown of the company, where it earns its revenue, what models it's delivering, and then we'll also have a bunch of other information about the firm later down here. So that is the brokerage tab or the brokerage function, the BRC function. Now the next function I want to show you is something I've talked about before, but it bears repeating. It's the FA or financial analysis function. And this function will allow you to collect just about any information, any quantitative information that comes on the firm's income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows, as going pretty far back, at least 10 quarters uh, for most firms. And to get to the FA function, what we're going to do is we're going to go and type in FA into the search bar. So FA. And the financial analysis function, I know I've walked through this before, but this is really the best place to get information about a particular security. It'll have valuation ratios, profitability ratios, liquidity and leverage ratios, uh, other market data. So as you can see, we're on the, the hi highlights tab and it has all of the important valuation ratios that many of which I've already talked about. Uh, price to earnings, price to book, uh, EV to EBIT, uh, the EBITDA ratio, etc. Now we can get to this fi fundamental analysis section several ways. Another way that we can get to it is just by typing the ticker symbol or the name of the security that we actually want to analyze, let's say Tesla. And down here we can select Tesla and we can actually go to the f fundamental analysis section and now we'll have a lot more data. Notice that when we had the S&P 500 index loaded, all we were really getting was the, the average of the firms on the S&P 500. Here with an individual security, we have just about every piece of information. Uh, so the income statement, the balance sheet, statement of cash flows, various ratios. We have segment data on Tesla so we can look at how it how much in terms of sales come from the automotive sector or perhaps other operations. We can also see by geographic location where they're selling their vehicles. And we can also see by segment uh, the, the individual uh, industry with a little more breakdown than what you would normally be given on the uh, 10K. And then we have some other information about Tesla that is handy and goes well beyond the ratios that we've talked about. So we have information on, say, the number of employees or the uh, R&D expense, the inventory turnover. We have number of vehicles pr produced worldwide. So as you can see, that's drastically increasing through time. And we also have some other information here, any contractual obligations. We have some uh, debt schedules. I mean, really anything you would ever want to know for an individual security is going to be found under the financial analysis tab. Now, the final function I want to show you is the FLDS function. And this function is useful if you want to import data into Excel. And this FLDS function is the field search function. 
This function allows you to look up any variable name you could possibly want. So here we are, and I'll just type in, we'll say book equity. And here we have a number of different variable names with respect to book equity. So if we wanted to use Excel to directly import data from Bloomberg, these are going to be the, the variable names we might want to use to get uh, some form of book equity for our company, which in this case we'll say is Tesla. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. If you have any questions on collecting economic data, industry level data or data on an individual security, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I suppose I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.